So for older baby boomers, in other words, baby boomers who were born in 1945 up until I think 52 or something, they would have been the early first wave of baby boomers. And then I was in the middle, 1955. And I think the boom ended in 60 something, 62, 63. But for those first guys, the definition of Al Capone in a screen presence was defined by Neville Brand, the actor. He was this stark guy, gravel voice. He portrayed Al Capone on the TV series The Untouchables, which was hugely popular. He appeared in the pilot uh, as Capone, and then later on in this really good double episode called The Big Train. You can still see that, The Big Train episode. It's two-parter, I think. It, online. Just look for it, The Big Train. The uh, he was also seen in glimpses and flashbacks throughout the series. He was a unlike Capone. He was a big man. He had a hulking physique. Uh, he was over six feet. He did a score of crime dramas, these wonderful film noir films, movies that he made. He always, always, always appeared as the villain, the vicious henchman, the western outlaw, the gangster. He appeared in Riot and Sobach 11, Port of New York, DOA, Kiss Tomorrow Goodbye, The Mob, uh, the mob, Kansas City Confidential, and the George Raft story, which is really, uh, he portrayed Capone in the George Raft story. Um, that Don't bother to see that film. It's so ridiculous. Uh, Raft got a free ride on that one. But anyway, unlike Capone, who lied most of his life and lied often about his war service, Brand was an actual war hero. He won the Silver Star and the Purple Heart in the European theater in World War II. As a sergeant and a platoon leader, he was wounded in action in 1945, shot in the upper right arm. He nearly bled to death before the medics could get to him on the field. Before that, he his unit was held down by a fire from a German machine gun nest that had buried itself in a hunting lodge. Neville, seeing there was no other answer, assaulted the lodge on his own. He took the Germans out. Unfortunately, and this happens to a lot of young men. The wartime service gave him post-traumatic stress, and it led to bouts of alcoholism, and that cost him his fortune, probably a lot of jobs as well. He died in 1992 after a long and really very distinguished film career.